why we face special challenges in the safety sector when it comes to personal selection. First of all, we have safety relevant activities. So on one hand, there's a special responsibility of the persons carrying out those activities. And therefore, we want to make sure that they meet the necessary requirements to perform these activities safely. On the other hand, there are laws, directives, and guidelines which require that relevant skills are thoroughly tested before a person is allowed to work in those jobs. As a result, testing can be quite time consuming and expensive because we have to test a lot of different abilities or personality factors. Especially when we have a large number of applicants, testing too many unsuitable applicants can lead to extremely high costs. For example, because we need additional administrative personnel for the testings, we need additional inter, uh, infrastructures or rooms. Um, on the other hand, Sorry, on the other hand, testing too few people um, can lead to bottlenecks in personal capacity because if we're not testing enough people, we're of course also not recruiting enough people. And that's where screening proce uh, procedures come into play because they help to optimize uh, the process of personal selection. By their nature, screening procedures are usually applied at a very early stage in the selection process. Often we perform a pre-selection of applicants on the basis of certain must-have criteria, which can be derived from the CV, such as work experience, certifications, or graduations. And all applicants who meet these criteria will then be invited to an online screening, which means the tests can be carried out from anywhere in the world, independent of location. The screening then makes it possible to identify those applicants who are not suitable. That means who do not meet important cognitive requirements such as a high ability to concentrate. This means that we have a smaller number of applicants which we actually invite to a more comprehensive on-site testing in order to ultimately select the most suitable applicants who we will then actually hire or train. The pool of candidates that is now invited to a more comprehensive on-site testing is not only smaller and therefore less time consuming and costly to test, but the candidates in the pool are also more likely to be successful in the on-site testing because certain basic skills have already been identified as given in advance. In addition, the repeated testing on-site gives us the possibility to verify the results of the screening. And that the probability that the person selected in the screening are actually suitable for relevant jobs in the field of safety is higher is of course no coincidence, but it's based on the fact that the skills that we test in our safety screening are not chosen arbitrarily, but on the basis of international guidelines, established selection procedures and empirical data. Before we dive deeper into this, let's have a look at who usually uses screening. And one of those persons is Anna, and Anna is currently recruiting all over Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. Her target groups are applicants for a position as a pilot, and her procedure looks as follows. First of all, she does a review of all application documents. And as you can see here, she has a lot of applicants, a high number of applicants, 300. So for one person, this would be a lot to check manually. And that's why her company implemented a standardized online form on their website where applicants can enter their personal information, their working experience, and their educational background. And then automatically the standardized form is checked for uh, must-have criteria such as, let's say, a high school graduation. As you can see here, still 270, uh, 270 of those 300 applicants fulfill this must-have criteria. So what Anna does is she invites all applicants for a safety screening especially, uh, or our safe SC. And from those 270, the 60 potentially most suitable candidates are then invited to an on-site testing, where uh, beyond the skills tested in the screening, all relevant skills that you need as a pilot are tested. Around or ex ex exactly a third of those 60 people, uh, namely 20, are then uh, identified as suitable, that means across all relevant skills, they fulfill the requirements, and those 20 are then invited to an on-site interview. From those 20, eight will then get offered a contract or an employment. 
So as you can see here, safety or the screening is an additional step which helps to reduce the overall amount of applicants that are invited to the on-site testing and therefore help to make the whole process more efficient. And as you can derive, uh, derive for, from this example, Safe SC was developed for the air sector, but additionally, we also have a tested configuration for the road sector and for the rail sector. And if we have a look at the skills here, let's start with air. We can see that in the test configuration or test set configuration for the air sector, we have logical reasoning, the numerical ability, the ability to concentrate or attention, and optional, we have the possibility to apply a personality questionnaire to assess the emotional stability of a person as well as the conscientiousness. And all these dimensions that I've just listed are reflected in the guidelines of the International Air Transport Association. Furthermore, they are already used in the selection procedures of various military and civil organizations and they have been identified in empirical studies as relevant predictors of a person's flight performance and are therefore highly suitable for screening in the air sector. We followed a similar approach in the test set for the rail sector. Here we have the EU directive for train drivers, which stipulates that both prospective and existing train drivers should be tested with psychological procedures. And again, the dimensions in which they are to be tested are of course defined in the directive. We have here logical reasoning, verbal ability, as well as the ability to concentrate or attention, and again, optional, the possibility to assess personality factors, emotional stability, and conscientiousness. And just as in our screening for the aviation sector, we have empirical findings from various studies that confirm the relevance of these skills and factors for train drivers. In the road sector, the assessment guidelines on the fitness to drive explicitly define different mental performance requirements when driving a motor vehicle. In addition, we use theoretical models of driving behavior for the selection of the dimensions. Those who have already dealt with theoretical models of driving behavior will already know the work of Kröger and Hataka, which are well known in this area, um, especially the so-called GDE mat matrix, which is a very a popular and well-known model helped us to derive dimensions. And the, the special thing about the GDE matrix is that it illustrates that in addition to basic cognitive abilities as defined in the assessment guidelines on the fitness to drive, other mental models, uh, other mental processes, sorry, also play an important role for driving a motor vehicle. For example, logical reasoning or personality traits such, uh, such as emotional stability, conscientiousness, and agreeableness. Um, the importance of those skills and personality factors has also been shown repeatedly in empirical findings for predicting the driving performance for professional as well as for non-professional drivers. For example, it has been shown that the cognitive skills listed here have a high influence on accident frequency and driving behavior in general. It is important to note that for all three areas, air, rail, and traffic, empirical studies have also shown that the skills we see here are not equally important, but their relevance var varies from area to area. Remember this well, it will become, uh, it will become important again in a few moments. Let's first have a look at how we assess those dimensions. Um, we use or we use three tests in Safe SC. First test is the inventory for testing cognitive abilities, or in short, int. It allows us to as uh, to assess the the ability for logical reasoning, which you can see here on the left. In the middle, you can see our test for the numerical ability, and to the right, you can see our test for the verbal ability. We also have the attention and concentration test, or in short, TACO, and again, it is optional to apply this, but it is possible. The big five structure inventory, a personality questionnaire, in short, BFSI. We will not go into detail about these tests now. Um, if you want to have more information about those tests, um, I recommend you our webinars on those tests or a visit on our website where you can all in, find all information about safety screenings as well as about more um, extensive tests in the safety sector. 
let's uh, look at the ev evaluation, which is very interesting for the screening because we want to have a quick overview of all results. So this is why we also implement the overall scoring. And we see here that the overall scoring summarizes all results in the individual abilities and personality dimensions and presents the suitability of the applicant as a percentage value. The star rating to the right of it puts the whole thing into perspective and provides us a three-leveled interpretation, which makes it easier for us to estimate whether a result of X percent is rather good or rather less good. If you have just paid attention, you know that different skills are not equally important in every area. And that's why when calculating the total value, we take these differences into account and weigh the results and the individual skills based on empirical findings regarding the relevance for the respective area to finally calculate the overall scoring or yeah, the overall scoring. Of course, in addition to the quick overview that the overall scoring provides, we also have information about the results in the individual dimensions below, which also show us whether all results are in the green range or whether we, uh, or if we have measured conspicuously low results somewhere via a traffic light system. That means the traffic light or the green light we see here switches to yellow or red depending on your score. And as you can imagine, or as I've already mentioned before, not uh, the abilities in the screening are not sufficient for um, flying, for example, a plane or being a train driver. And that's why we also offer more comprehensive testing, which you can find in the Vienna test system. For example, for the safety screening air, we also have a follow-up test set, the safety <clears throat> assessment air, or in short, SAR. Um, which helps us to make a final decision. So safety screening helps us to reduce the overall amount of uh, applicants by, ident by identifying those who are not suitable. And the safety test set, SAR in this case, helps us to make a final decision by assessing all relevant skills 